Hello and welcome to the show. I am here on Forza 6 with another silly car build. My vehicle today is the Dodge Charger Hellcat. A, well, let's face it, to start with, quite a crazy car. And it's only really going to, uh, to get crazier. Unfortunately, my recording software may have crashed uh, halfway through the build. So, yeah, I have got it and stuck all of the parts on this car. Uh, all already, it is a ridiculous vehicle. I love the Hellcats just because they are. This from standard, they are so stupid. And this one, well, by the time I've finished upgrading it, has 1,047 horsepower, 901 foot-pounds of torque. That's a lot of power and a lot of torque, although... There is an awful lot of weight, 3,747 pounds. That's a, a sizable amount of weight, probably the heaviest vehicle I have had in this uh, silly car build series. It's, it's an awful, awful lot of weight in this uh, in this car. And of course, you know, that is with, with the full weight reduction and so on. Uh, without it, it's <laughs> 4,700 pounds. It's... Yeah, a very heavy vehicle. Now, that might not necessarily be too bad or a thing. We have seen the slightly heavier cars. You get a little bit more stability with them. It's not so likely to be twitchy and try and throw you in a wall. But admittedly, when there's this much weight, trying to get it to change direction quickly you might be a little bit of an issue, potentially. I don't, don't quite know how the Charger is going to fare. One big plus point on the car, though is the tyres. 355s on the rear, 295s at the front. They are huge tyres. Now, we saw large tyres on the Mercury, and that kind of put its power down quite well, and considering, you know, the Charger is a much more modern vehicle, you know, much more modern technology in the Charger than there was in the Mercury, perhaps it won't be too bad. I'm kind of thinking that this might be quite surprising. I think this could potentially do quite well. If it can get turned, if we don't have catastrophic amounts of understeer uh, through the slower sections, I reckon this could actually be quite a, quite a decent car. It could go surprisingly fast, or it could be terrifyingly scary. But there's always an option when you have a thousand horsepower rear-wheel drive Dodge. Now, to test out the Charger, I have brought it to the Virginia International Raceway, where it will have five laps around the Patriot alternate layout in an attempt to go faster than a Honda S2000 that currently leads the table with one 10.5. The table itself is actually all remarkably close between the vehicles, so yeah, this I, I'm thinking that we certainly could see this do, uh, do impressively, impressively well if we have the control to uh, to go with it. Apparently we have uh, quite short gear edges. This car's got like seven gears. It probably does, judging by how short those first gears are. Oh, come on now. Get it slowed down. Those brakes are actually pretty impressive. Again, there is a huge amount of weight to, to be getting stopped through these corners. And the front end is, yeah, it's not too bad at all. Getting the front of the car uh, changed direction through there. I am glad, of course, yeah, sliding around there is uh, always going to happen. Uh, the curb, I don't think we're going to see the uh, the Charger roll over there. I don't think we've got, uh, we've got too good of a suspension, really, for that to be a concern. It's certainly not uh, picking up on two, uh, two wheels. It'll try and be neat and tidy out of there. It just does want to spin. Those giant rear tires is a very very big slide through there and now be careful through the RC corner we're again not too bad there and we're trying to get the brakes right up towards this uh, final turn yeah the, the charger is actually doing quite well here it's um yeah aside from the, the gear ratios I'm not sure really help matters here they are very short and that certainly doesn't help with wheel spin straight line speed is Good, 172 miles an hour. It's certainly not bad. It's not the fastest that we have seen, though. The car is, while it can get the power down quite nicely, you know, probably the best car in terms of power delivery. It's twice the weight of the likes of the Jaguar, and that that's quite a lot, really. To uh, it's not quite twice the weight actually. The Jaguar was a uh, a little bit heavier than I was expecting that car to to be, but uh, this is so much heavier than the vehicles. Uh, that have gone before that it's perhaps not too surprising that we don't quite have the same blistering acceleration even with the uh, better traction it is very very good through these corners 
actually does. It doesn't feel like... Ooh, okay, we're a bit slidey through there. It really doesn't feel like it's almost £4,000 of uh, charger <laughs> going around here. It is quite impressive. And much in the same way that the uh, the Camaro, the Z28, does so well. It feels like a very uh, light car. But it really is that the Camaro... I mean, the Camaro used for the autocross was only a fraction, probably about £100 lighter than, than this thing and uh, yeah that did not feel like a big heavy muscle car particularly in this again it's a similar story it doesn't feel like it is a, a giant heavyweight vehicle although it does perhaps struggle a little bit on acceleration down that uh, main straight our first lap time was not amazing I think there is still hopefully there is still some more speed to be found in the Dodge because I'm not quite sure where it's sort of losing the time and all that. It's one of these vehicles that it feels like it is actually a pretty damn quick car, this one. It really doesn't feel like there are any, you know, major problems with the car. And that is a, <laughs> that is a real testament to how good this Dodge is. It's, uh, <laughs> I think this is a phenomenal vehicle to be doing so well and to drive as well as it does, even when you've given it a thousand horsepower. We're going to go and play out on the <laughs> outside curb. That's never a good idea. And uh, then around this final turn, eventually we will get it to uh, turn through there. Oh, it's such an arsy corner. <laughs> the final couple of turns on this track are really, really tough corners. Oh, it's gone quicker than the Honda by fractions, but it has done it. I thought it was going to be good, this car. I thought it was going to be a fast, fast lap time when I get things right with it. Yeah, it's... <laughs> I really can't believe how well this thing drives. Is really very, very good through these corners. It struggles perhaps a little bit with understeer, but we see everything so far. Everything so far has struggled to get the front end turn through these turns. And out of all of them, even the S2000, the Charger is the best at getting through these slow corners. Now, that's not quite what I expected from the car. I thought it might be good at getting the power down. Uh, you know, you kind of expect it when it's got these giant tires. You kind of expect it to be pretty good at putting all of its power down. And there is plenty of power in this car. I didn't expect to be saying that uh, the front end does really get changed direction very, very well. And the oversteer is... I mean, it's there when you have a 1,000 horsepower in the rain. It's always going to be quite easy to slide the car about. But, um, yeah, it really doesn't take very much to, you know keep the dodge under control and that <laughs> that is impressive that is impressive the brakes are as good as we have seen from the other cars despite the thousand or so pounds more weight in here yeah, he's a lot a lot of a lot of momentum that he's got to try and stop coming down into that uh, turn one i don't really like the gear ratios on this car particularly i think they're, they're too short as well kind of spent quite a lot of time faffing about with them and, and Despite that, though, this is, um, yeah, <laughs> this is a damn, damn good car. I think I might have tried try to swing it around uh, a little bit uh, too much through there. Yeah, we're, I don't think I'm quite going to be able to find any time on this uh, final lap. This is not what I was expecting. Not at all what I was expecting from the Charger, but it is very, very impressive. Nonetheless, I'm going to put it down into, I think, third is probably going to work uh, around here. Ooh. Possibly, if we can get it turned in through there, which we can, very nicely done. And try and get on that power out of the final turn. It's a run towards the line, but it wasn't going to go quicker. I'm really quite impressed. I'm really very impressed by, <laughs> by this Dodge. That does not drive anywhere to how I expected it to. Front end has got a lot of grip. It will actually get through the wiggly sections here. Very, very well, of course. Putting the power down out of the corners is no particular surprise with such huge tyres and a fair amount of weight to the vehicle. But it gets stopped very, very well. Yeah, the Charger is a damn good car. The, the Charger Hellcat is a really, really very, very good vehicle. It does go top of the leaderboard. It beats the Honda S2000 by less than a tenth of a second. It is all very close. It's still incredibly close between all of these cars from the Hellcat to the S2000 to the Maserati race car and the Mercury Coupe they're all very similar less than half a second separates all of them so yeah this track is uh, 
proving to yeah throw up some interesting results the this thing is is a mighty mighty good vehicle though to be able to drive in the way that it does and it would, to have the confidence as well that i have in the car to drive it that way is is very very impressive now though it is time to see how the charge does in a straight line and will it beat the challenger of course, to find out, I have brought the Dodge to the Le Mans circuit. Now, the speed we are looking at it to try and beat is 231 miles an hour. That is the uh, the top speed set by the Challenger Hellcat, and the two cars have same engine, so it's all going to come down to which vehicle has the better aerodynamics. And by the looks of it, it's going to be the Charger. The char I mean, it's 232 and I haven't taken the aero bits off or fiddled around with the gear ratio. So, 238, it does look like... Oh, and the char... It does have stupid gear ratios. I thought it did. Uh, <laughs> they are stupid, stupid gear ratios. Um, yeah, it looks like the charger is going to is going to probably do it. Wait, can I have that 238 miles an hour back, please? I was I was quite liking the 238. There we go, 238.4. Yep, I will I will take that if we can if we can manage it. I mean, this is never likely to go to the very top of the table. It's not going to challenge the Jaguar D types 270 miles an hour. It's 200 horsepower down, and well, it's a four door saloon car, not a um, Le Mans race car. So yeah, it was never likely to quite challenge the very top, the D type, the 250 LM, and so on. But if this can beat the uh, the Challenger, then that is pretty damn good going, really, for this car. And it drives so very well. Uh, it really... I think it might even be better than the S2000. It might be certainly easier to drive than the S2000, although curves are probably not going to be its friend uh, around here. I... yeah, not, not quite. Not quite what I was expecting. Yes, you can... ooh, you can overdo it, that's for sure. Or in the... With this car, it doesn't really take much when you have this much power in a <laughs> in a rear-wheel drive muscle car. But um, yeah, it's a it's a very very nice very nice driving and remarkably controllable vehicle. Now we're going to find out just how brutally fast it uh, might be, and there's going to be a far too many gear changes. I don't like the eight-speed cars. I would much rather just have you know six six gears. That that, that, that tends to work on the most parts. Um, Right, we're up to 210 miles an hour in the Charger, and we, well, we are just about keeping going. Not quite in the same way that the Jaguar <laughs> D-Type was that thing got to it, so that just kept going and going and going and going. This is going to start struggling when we get to sort of 230, we're eventually maybe going to get there. We got, well, we're past, we're past the Challenger at 233, 234 question is, are we going to run out of straight before it gets to its speed? I think it did just flick to 235 at one point down there. We are going to run out of straight. There is not enough. Uh, we got around the corner okay, though. Yeah, there's just not enough in the way of, uh, of straight here for the car to really quite get up to that uh, 238. It's just not got the aerodynamics, I don't think, to really, to really do it. I'm sure it would get up to that speed eventually, but uh, yeah, can't quite manage it here. Two, uh, 234, 235 is, is not too bad, though. Not too bad at all, really, from the uh, from the Dodge. And it is very, very controlled in in doing all of that. Celebratory donut. Uh, so that, uh, that straight line speed will, interestingly, put it tied with the Honda S2000. The S2000 managed 235 miles an hour as well, considering that only had 875 horsepower. That's, um, yeah, I, I think that's quite a, quite a good showing from the from the Honda. Yeah, it, it is a little bit quicker than the Challenger in a straight line, and this is a, a hell of a lot nicer through the corners. I think this is a fantastic car. Uh, really not what I was expecting from the Hellcat. Very, very composed through the turns. Um, yeah, I think it's a it's a damn good vehicle. It's a really very very good car. Uh, plenty of plenty of straight line speed, but it's the control of the vehicle that is uh, by far the most impressive. Anyway, that is it for this uh, video, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye.